so the, the, the dominant theme that I think impacts the U.S. mindset about China today is the word containment. And it's understandable. If you're the U.S. and you have had the leading global economy for 150 years and not really taken China as a serious competitor until relatively recently, the idea of treating China as an equal is an emotionally very hard thing to do because you've always been number one. And by the way, this is not very different than the Qing dynasty in the 18th and 19th century. So when Great Britain came over as the leading uh, country in terms of economic performance in the world and said, here are all of the wonderful inventions, things we have as a result of the Industrial Revolution. The response from the emperor was basically, we don't need any of those things. So this position of the U.S. of we are the shining city on the hill, to use the words of Ronald Reagan, that leads you to a level of self-confidence uh, that you don't really need anyone else and you don't really have any threats. But the reality is China is rapidly becoming co-equal to the U.S., not only in terms of absolute economic performance, but its momentum and its fact that its population is four times the size means inevitably it's going to pass the U.S. What we've tried to do, apart from rhetoric, is use tariffs and sanctions and basically, you know, undermine free trade uh, to force China uh, to do some things on their own. So especially in the area of chips, the U.S. is basically cutting off Chinese access to the high-end chips that do have military possible application. But those sanctions are pretty broad and cover a lot of categories of chips that frankly have nothing to do with military applications. It's really just the U.S. trying to hold China back with the idea that we want to buy more time and stay number one for a longer period of time. But A, it's not going to work. Uh, I would argue that when we look back at the impact of these sanctions on China, we're going to discover that we motivated China to invest more and go faster and become independent of the U.S. in areas like chips. So we, we need the U.S. to basically accept that China is, A, already close to co-equal economically, and how quickly it's moved on the uh, issues related to advanced technologies. So why not, given that China is the most attractive market out there, why don't we, instead of contain, try to compete? which means what are the natural competitive advantages that the U.S. has? How do we invest in R&D? Uh, how do we improve our education system so we produce more STEM students and get close to the number that China produces? But that way, it's, got, it's a win-win. Then the competition is healthy competition, and the U.S. actually starts dealing with some of its own challenges rather than trying to jag China down. When is that shift going to take place? Who knows? But I would hope that after this election, that cooler heads will prevail. Then we ought to be able to create a, a level of trust on both sides where you can move to healthy competition and where each side gets better as a result of that competition.